um, let me first take this opportunity to um, wish Professor Bala a very happy birthday, uh, 60th birthday, as Professor Kumaran was saying. It's an auspicious occasion. Uh, it's a big number. Um, so uh, we, have, uh, we have three talks lined up in this session. Uh, our first speaker is Professor Chausen, and he is uh, currently at the center, he's a professor at the Center for Combustion Energy at uh, Tsinghua University in uh, Beijing. Uh, he is also associated with, uh, uh, as an associate editor with the International Journal of Multiphase Flows and uh, an editor, the editor of the Journal of Turbulence. And uh, he also serves on the editorial board of Physical Review Fluids. His research has interests in multiphase flows. He's made no, many notable contributions to it, particularly in Taylor Quid flow, laden frost uh, droplets, and so on. Uh, so the floor is yours, and um, uh, it's a 30 minute talk. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Professor Dix. So, here, uh, so uh, first, uh, I would like to thank the organizer for organizing this uh, fantastic event. So, I, I want to say happy birthday, Bala. So we, I really want to express my uh, appreciation, to, appreciation to Bala. I, as a colleague, I learned a lot from you. And also, I also very much enjoy working with you for International Journal of Multiphase Flow. In fact, uh, uh, Bala visited me uh, at Beijing a, a few years ago. He gave a very nice talk uh, about his work. And also he talked to the colleagues. You see, I, I invited some colleagues from, uh, from Tsinghua. Bala talked to the colleagues about the research, also about the journal, also about some personal life. And also here, uh, you see, uh, uh, Bala also visited the lab, talked to students. And at that moment, Dominic Legendary was also visiting me, and we had a lot of fun that day. I really want, to, uh, I, I'm looking forward to host, uh, to host Bala's visit in future again. So uh, I want to thank the organizer for giving me opportunity to talk about our recent work about this uh, convective flow with ice and boiling boundaries. So the work was done together with the Chiwang, Enrico Cassiverini, Federico Torsky, and Marcus Maitai. So uh, uh, thermally convective flows are wide open in many nature phenomena, such as this kind of in the ocean, convection in the ocean, and also in, uh, let's say, in Earth, particularly in the, near the surface of the Earth, uh, the sun, and also atmosphere convection here, you see, even when we boil water, you generate convective flows. So to study these complicated uh, convective flows, one use this kind of ideal system, we call the really banana convection system. Basically, this is, this is really, and this is banana. The system is, can be simplified as this kind of two parallel plates. You see a fluid layer, a fluid layer is confined between the two plates. Basically, you maintain the top plate temperature to be T0, another temperature will be uh, larger. Basically, you have the temperature difference, delta. You, you basically, with this, you can drive the flow. The control parameter of system is, uh, control parameters are really number and a parental number. Really numbers measures the driving strength of the, uh, of the uh, driving strength. Here you can understand it as a dimension as a temperature difference. Of course, parental number measures the fluid properties of this working fluid. The key response parameter will be natural number, which measures the heat flux, heat transfer, due to convection normalized by heat transfer due to conduction. So and here uh, for this, uh, for this uh, really another uh, system, convection system, when your drivers flow strong enough, you, you will see this stability, you get a convection rules. Of course, people are, recently people are interested in those studies, uh, the convection uh, phenomena at high really number regimes. So uh, the first work uh, we, we are going to discuss is about the convective flow with ice and boundaries. Uh, our interest is this. We want to study how the growth uh, of ice depends on the fluid dynamics underneath. So the work was done together with Zhi Wang, my PhD student at Tsinghua, and uh, Enrico Casaverni from University of Lille, and Federico Torski from Eindhoven University. So here, this, we see the ice formation uh, wide occurs in, in nature and in industrial processes. Here's the ice formation. See, so it looks the ice from the uh, below. Here's on the lake, you see the ice. Our focus is how do the growth of weight and morphology of ice depends on the fluid flow nearby, basically at a laboratory scale. 
So what do we do is this. We, again, as I said before, we use the classical uh, convection system, basically classical really banana system. Basically, what we are going to start, we are going to start is growth rate, the morphology of the ice and the time to equilibrium state. The, this is our start into a starting situation. Here, this is the top plate. We keep the top plate temperature to be below deg zero degree and the bottom temperature to be above zero degree. Basically, we started the uh, system with kind of the warm situation, basically with the uh, temperature, uh, the, the, the working fluid temperature is the same with the bottom plate temperature. We started to cool the top plate. The ice will be formed on the top surface and it will grow. The ice will grow. And here you see, we see this is below zero degree. This is above zero degree of clocks. And this is ice water interface. We have the temperature of zero degree. As the system arrives at the equilibrium state, we have kind of the ice height and the water height. Our approach is this, we combine experiments, direct numerical simulations and theoretical modeling. So for the experiment, here's the experiment. Basically we use the, here you see again, this top plate, this is the bottom plate. We, we maintain the top plate temperature with a circulating bus. And also with, uh, for the bottom plate, we also use a circulating bus. Here again, from experiment, we can measure this ice water interface. We can measure this ice height and the time to equilibrium state. So here for the simulation, we use the direct numerical simulation with the lattice Boltzmann. Here's the governing equation for the water layer. It's just the, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, as usual. Here's the boundary conditions. And here's the water for the water, ice water interface with energy equation of this, we consider the, uh, the basically the, as energy uh, as a, the, the heat uh, exchanged due to the phase transition. We use the enthalpy edge to separate the two phases. Then this, uh, this has been implemented by uh, LBM algorithm in 2D and 3D. This code uh, was developed by Enrico Cassiverini and co works. I refer to these people for the details. For this new work, the key implement, uh, implementation is this. We, Im we, uh, we implemented this water density anomaly. Basically, as we know, around a four degree, the water has its maximum density. Now here we have non-monotonic dependence of the density on uh, temperature. We implemented this in the uh, DNS code. For the, uh, for the 1D model, we use, we, use, uh, we use kind of 1D average model. This model is based on conservation of total heat flux. Basically heat flux through here and here, in each layer, in each layer, the, uh, the heat flux is conserved. Of course, here there's a fluid, this uh, for the water layer, the fluid motion in the water layer will be important. We have to be consider this fluid layer motion uh, uh, properly. Of course, we need the input prime and the last number for this fluid layer, and we can use the uh, DNS or we use the theoretic model for this. So here I'm showing you this, uh, the first measurement, we, we, we use three experiments here, the 3D simulation, the 2D simulation. Basically, we maintain the top plate to be a kind of minus 10 degree here, all the cases. And here is this ice layer, this ice layer, this ice layer, the water, the water, the equilibrium state. Basically, our idea is we change the bottom plate temperature. Then we see the equilibrium height of the water layer, or if you use the entire system's uh, height to subtract this water layer, get as ice layer uh, thickness as function of the bottom plate temperature. Let's see what happens. Here, I'm plotting you this, this basically water layer thickness as a function of the bottom plate temperature. We fix the top plate temperature to be minus 10 degree. Of course, here you see, uh, with increasing the bottom plate temperature, the water layer thickness is, incre is increasing. Of course, correspondingly, the ice thickness decreases. Here you see those triangles are experiment. The circles are 2D simulations and the uh, stars are uh, the, the 3D simulations. We see experiments, 3D and the 2D simulation agree well. Now, if we use this 1D average model, we start uh, considering density anomaly, we see a big difference here. We see a big, big difference. This, for example, here, this is uh, the water prediction from the model. But for this 1D model, if we consider the density anomaly, in fact, we can correct the model, the finer thickness of the ice or finer thickness of the water layer. So therefore, it's crucial to consider density anomaly. 
why? What happened in the system? In fact, the system is quite complicated. It's a, it's a coupling dynamics between ice layer and the water layer. This water layer is not a single layer because at the ice water interface, you have zero degree. In fact, here in between, you get a four degree line. Between zero and four degree line, you have a stably stratified layer. And the below this four degree line, you may get this unstable stratified layer. For this unstable stratified layer, this layer could be stable or unstable. It depends on the, if we define this layer, we define an effective reading them here. In fact, the effective reading them, if this effective reading them is larger than this critical reading them, you get a convection motion. If it's smaller than the critical value, you get a diffusion. But uh, furthermore, if the ice is growing, this layer will be shrinking. This layer could start with convection that end with diffusion. So therefore, this uh, the dynamics is quite rich. So here I'm showing uh, four cases. This is the first case is very easy, simple case. If we ask, okay, if the bottom plate temperature is below four degree, of course it's easy. Here is below four degree. Therefore, this is uh, the top plate minus ten. Here you get a water uh, ice interface. Here zero degree. This will be st stably stratified. The system will be always in diffusive state. Of course, but when we increase the temperature further, for the bottom temperature is above four degree and it's below the five degree, of course, because, it's, because the fact is, big, is, uh, is higher than four degree, we will have a four degree line in between. Here, this is ice layer. Here, you see ice layer. This is ice water interface. Here's a four degree line. You see, the, you see in this unstable straight fire layer, you start with convection. And it evolves with ice, uh, ice is growing, growing, ice layer is growing. And you see eventually this unstable, unstable layer becomes uh, stable. Basically, the unstable layer started with convection, but ends with diffusive state. Because it's four degree line, four degree line is this flat. Therefore, this ice water interface is undisturbed. You see here the ice water interface is flat. But if we uh, reach the temperature further here, for the temp bottom plate temperature larger than five degrees, less than seven degree, you see again this ice water interface, this ice layer, this stable stratified layer, this unstable layer. What we see is this unstable layer started with convection and also ends with convection as well. You see here the four degree line is highly fluctuating, but this ice water interface is still undisturbed because this, uh, this unstable flow is not strong enough. So here, what happens if we push the temperature further? Here, we reach the temperature of the bottom plate to be above the 6.9, like 7 degrees, we see this. What we can see is this unstable layer started with strong convection and end with strong convection as well. It's because with strong convection, this is a four degree line, this is a four degree line, this is ice water interface zero degree line. In fact, this ice water interface is also deformed because of this strong convection. So here, here I'm plotting you the thickness of this, uh, the final thickness of the water. It's, uh, it's either it's a water layer, ice water interface here is the black circle. And also this is four degree line as the red circles. Of course, the regime one, regime two, you see, they all can be well defined. So, but in regime three, as I said before, the ice water interface is undisturbed, but four degree line is fluctuating. Of course, in the regime four, in the regime four of the both ice water, in, ice water interface and its four degree, line, degree lines are highly fluctuating. The, the, the reason is due to the strong interaction between the ice, stable stratified layer, and unstable stratified layer. But nevertheless, if we take spatial average thickness, for this kind of ice water interface, and even the four degree line. We can see, so the global response of system still can be modeled, because the spatial average of the ice water interface and even the four degree line can be reasonably modeled. This is kind of 1D simple model. So next we slide, we, we started dynamics ice grooves. Here, I'm plotting you, before we plotted the thickness of this uh, water layer, now I plot you the thickness of ice picture. You just use a system height, Subtract of the water layer thickness, get okay, ice. You see, the, the, we started the ice starts from zero, thickness of the ice starts from zero and it evolves with time. 
And of course, due to diffusion, early stage of diffusion dominant, so you get this, uh, the thickness of ice grows with, with this time, with square root dependence. So indeed, we see a very nice square root dependence. And you see here, of course, when the, when the bottom plate temperature is, is, is low, is, uh, is low, you get a thick ice. When the bottom plate temperature is higher, you get a thin ice. You see saturation value is different. With the increase in bottom plate temperature, the saturation value becomes smaller. So those circles, here we define those circles. The circles show the saturation time. Basically, we define the ice in time. Our definition is this, where the ice thickness is increasing to a value of 90% of its this is a equitable value. We say, okay, this is here, the time here, we define it as icing time, or we define a saturation time. We plot this saturation time, this saturation time as function of the bottom plate temperature. Here, I show you 2D numerical simulations. It's experiments you see here. The, and also, we, uh, this is the, 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 the blue line. It's a Wendy model. You see here, they all agree well. And we see the icing time strongly depends on the bottom plate temperature. When the convection sets in, this icing time, the, there's a huge uh, reduction in, on the icing time when the convection starts setting in. So here's a summary of this, about this part. We started coupling dynamics between flow and ice growth. We identified several regimes on the uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the different le uh, level of interactions. And also we see the ice grows diffusively and the bottom plate temperature has major effect on icing time. Furthermore, we also start icing dynamics in different systems. Before we started the, in classical really banana system, basically you cool from top, your heat from the bottom, basically it's a similar situation with the leak. And here we start the different situation. When you cool the system from the left, your, your, your basically your, your maintain a high temperature in the right, you get this ice water interface. You see this very strange ice interface is due to the complex motion in the fluid layer. Furthermore, we also study icing dynamics in the really banana and vertical convection system and with different aspirations. Basically, we define different container geometry. This is inter interaction between the convection rows and with the ice layer. So next, next we discuss about the convection flow with boiling boundaries. Before we discuss convection flow with, uh, with icing boundary, now we start to talk about the boiling boundary. This work was done together with Zitian Wang from Tsinghua University and Vakis Matai from, you know, uh, from the uh, UMass. Here, as we know, as also I explained, the, the heat transfer efficiency not so number uh, versus really name has a robust, they have a robust dependence. Basically, this means that a given system for a given parameter is extremely difficult to dramatically increase heat transfer efficiency. So how to do it? The one way is to do it to introduce the phase transition. So here I'm showing you a, 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 a very nice work. So here you see if this is really not a convection system, convective flow system. If the heat bottom plate is strong enough, if you the bottom plate temperature is above, the boiling point of the working fluid, you can generate a lot of vapor bubbles. These vapor bubbles carry heat and enhance the heat transfer efficiency. And this is nice work done by Guntalas' group. And also this is, uh, uh, this is a simulation done by Andrea Prosperity, that Lev Laws and Roberto Vesico. Here you see, they really see the vapor bubbles can dramatically increase heat transfer efficiency. For this advantage, you get, you get a very nice heat transfer enhancement. But that's also a drawback because the bottom plate temperature, you have to heat this way. To, to, the bottom plate temperature must be higher than the boiling point of the fluid. Therefore, so for, for many situations, the operation conditions are very limited. So how to overcome this? So our idea is, the, our approach is to, the, to, to do this. Here, you have the hot plate, the cold plate, the classical system, you get this hot plume, cold plume, Light circulation advance this kind of plumes to enhance heat, to enhance heat transfer efficiency. Our approach is this: we add a small amount of second fluid, a low boiling point of liquid, 
Here, we add only 1% HFE liquid. And this HFE liquid is heavier, therefore it spreads on the bottom surface. And the boiling point is, is much lower than that of water. It's only 34 degrees for this case. Here, our operation condition is this. We will boil this liquid, but we, we make sure the temperature of the bottom plate is much smaller than the main working fluid. That's the work. So we want to, what we want to do is we want to build a dynamic evaporation and condensation cycle. Here, are, our idea is this. We have the liquid layer here, HFE liquid, because the boiling point is low, it will boil, it will generate vapor bubbles. Those bubbles will rise, and they will be condensed into droplets. Because those droplets are heavier, they will fall down to the liquid layer again and merge to the liquid layer. Basically, the start of the liquid, then it recovers to the liquid. If you compare, it's very much similar to catalyst to chemical reactions. Because this HFE droplet bubbles promote heat transfer. And it basically is here, we hope this HFE drops bubbles can be self-organized and they will be self-sustainable. So that's the work, okay? To test this, we build experimental setup. In this work, we maintain the temperature difference to be constant, and we change the mean temperature. In this, we change the bottom plate temperature. Then we can vary the superheat of the bottom plate, of the second fluid. We measure the heat transfer efficiency. You see here, now for single phase RB uh, convection system, you get a hot, cold plume, hot plume, you get large circulation. In our case, for this biophysical part uh, system, we get a lot of vapor bubbles. We get this kind of the drops. So you see here, I'll show you again. This is the uh, rising bubbles, falling droplets. Near the bottom plate, you get the two phase plumes. So here, let me stress again, the heat carriers, we get additional heat carrier because we add this more, the second component of the fluid. So here you get a riser, Basically, the vapor bubbles, you, got this, you get this kind of the settlers, basically falling droplets. You get two phase plumes. Let's compare with the classical single phase key. For the single phase case, you add cold plumes, your hot plumes, and you use this kind of the, these are main heat carrier plumes. But for our, this kind of biophysical system, in addition to these plumes, you get this bubble, uh, bubbles, drops, and two phase plumes. What I want to stress is the buoyancy of this kind of biophysical particle, this, all of these, uh, these particles is much stronger than that of some plumes. So here, what about the global response? What about global heat transfer efficiency? Here I'm plotting you the Nassau name, the heat transfer efficiency normalized by Nassau number for the single phase case. Of course, in a single phase situation, it will be one. Here, as a function of the superheated temperature of the second fluid, the bottom plate temperature minus the boiling point of the second fluid. Of course, when it's below zero as expected, when this value is below, below zero as expected, the single phase, the, the system is in single phase state. You get light circulation. You see here, this HFE liquid spreads on the bottom surface. What happens if we raise the temperature to be above zero? Then, we will see the bubbles, vapor bubbles, and the droplets. We also see two phase plumes here, and then basically we see kind of biophysics plumes pinch off from the bottom plate. But we notice that only a fraction of this kind of HF, HFE takes in part in the activity. What happens if we reach the temperature further? Okay, now let me show you. Here in this case, we see strong convection motions. We see lots, lots of the vapor bubbles and droplets. And I will see here near the bottom plate, this all HFE uh, is clean off from the, uh, the bottom surface. Let's examine what is uh, effective on the heat transfer efficiency. Here again, I show you the Nassau number function of the superheated temperature. You'll see here in single phase case, it's, it's normalized value to one. But in this case, in this, uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this case, we can achieve up to 500% heat transfer effi efficiency. What I want to stress in all our experiments, our bottom plate temperature is much below than 100 degrees because the water is very cold. So what is physical mechanism? So I'm not going to discuss details here. Of course, the baseline of the thermal, thermal turbulence. 
the measured value subtract this baseline, we get a total heat transfer enhancement. What's the physical reason for this? Through detailed analysis, of course, first reaction would be lighting heat. Yes, lighting heat, lighting heat does contribute to the heat transfer if enhancement, but it doesn't, it cannot fully explain the huge heat transfer enhancement. It only contributes half um, partially to the heat transfer. What is the fit, uh, reason for the extra heat transfer efficiency uh, enhancement? In fact, through detailed analysis, we find this was due to this kind of the, the bubbles and drops induced agitation, basically by physical species induced agitation. This is a total heat transfer enhancement is due to the kinematics of the biophysical particle and the induced agitation. In the summary, we conceptualize a kind of active particle some, uh, turbulence system. We achieve huge heat transfer enhancement. The physical mechanism due to the kinematics of the active, uh, these kind of uh, particles and their induced agitation. So finally, I will thank you, attention, thank you for your attention. Happy, bus, happy birthday, Bala. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, for Yeah, um, we have time for a few questions. May I again start? Yeah, yes, please. Yes. Uh, uh, so um, I was very curious. This was a very interesting uh, uh, um, point you're raising about ice formation on the top. This is the first part of your talk. Um, mm. I, I, I was uh, curious, uh, does that ice form only at the surface or does it even form uh, um, inside the body of water and then move up to accumulate at the top uh, because of density or it just grows uh, slowly down uh, from the top? Okay, Bala, thank you for your nice question. You are very sharp. In fact, uh, the, uh, the reason is to make sure ice will only grow, uh, ice only, uh, will only grow near the top plate, you have to use very pure, the water has to be very, very pure. You have to use this kind of the very pure water and to, uh, in our system, we maintain the entire environment in the very, uh, the temperature control was, uh, temperature was nice controlled. We make sure the only the top plate part the temperature is below zero. All other part we maintain around to be zero. Therefore, we through this experiment control the ice formation from top. We could indeed you're right. We could if we do not control the experiment, you could generate ice in different places. Thank you. Um, if I could ask you a follow up question on that. Um, yes. What would be the role of salinity there? I mean, in, a, in, in, in real context, I would expect some salinity also to play a role and that's also heavier than water would make it and it would sink perhaps. Yeah. So in fact, uh, yeah. it's, it's excellent question. Uh, it's excellent question. In fact, uh, uh, when we wrote this paper, we said initially, we said, okay, uh, how is uh, the growth of the lake ice? We said, uh, we, we, we put lake at there. We said, we need start lake because it's not uh, ocean ice. So to, it's very, uh, it's, uh, it's quite complicated to do this, particularly numerically. It's, very, it's quite uh, challenging to do this, but we are working on it. It's very, very nice point. When there's, uh, when salinity, uh, uh, when salinity enters the game, game this the way we, uh, the system will be very, very complicated, but it's very interesting, very interesting point. And, and uh, well, if I, there, there is a question in Q and A. Uh, okay, uh, Nadim, you could just uh, unmute yourself and ask a question. Or I could just read out the question. It says in the Can first you... case, yeah, oh, yeah, please go ahead. Uh, I just read the question. Yeah, in the first case, the question is, in the first case, that is in the, the first part of the talk, I guess, are the plates fixed? If they are not fixed, no. would the top plate move? It's very, very nice. It's very sharp and nice question. The plates, are, uh, the all plates are fixed. Therefore, we put the expansion vessel here to account for the expansion of the expansion of the, the, the volume. 
Of course, if you do not fix the plate, the stress will be built in because of the density contrast. We put, a, we connect a tube here to control the, the pressure in the system, to maintain the pressure in the system. It's a very, very good question. Yes, the plate is fixed. So the, uh, we have to release the pressure, yes. There's a follow-up question by Nadim. It's, he's, he's asking, how is this accounted for in the DNS? Oh, so for, for, uh, for, 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 uh, this is a good question. In fact, here, so the density, the, the, this uh, density difference between, uh, between water and, uh, uh, and ice, we didn't consider that. We just, uh, yeah, we could. Uh, but okay. if you consider that, it would be uh, uh, more difficult. Okay. We only, we, in fact, here so far, we only use the expansion of the Bosonis equation, basic Bosonis equation, where you only consider the temperature variation, the buoyancy force due to temperature variation. Yeah, uh, we have time. I will we'll just take one last quick question. Um, Manoj Sharma is asking in the second case, I guess the second part of the talk, if we yes. change the fluid with some different boiling point fluid, do we see same increase in nusle number? Oh, this is, this is a very nice question. In fact, uh, this is about optimi optimization. In fact, here we just use one case. I'm pretty sure you can optimize this process. Use a different type of boiling point, use different fluid properties. You could easily, uh, let's say, improve the situation. Here, we just want to report our idea. The idea is this, we, we, we make this entire system cold. Meanwhile, we can, we can enjoy the fish transition process. And uh, this is the, the idea. Yes, it could be. So I guess uh, we'll, we'll thank the speaker, Professor Chow. Thanks a lot for this, for, for the wonderful talk.